Welcome everyone to today's CSIA webinar series. My name is Colin Hammond and I will be your host today. For those of you who are unfamiliar with CSIA, we are a global nonprofit professional association with over 500 member companies in 40 countries. Our mission is to advance the practice of control system integration to benefit our members and their clients. Our vision is to ensure that manufacturing and process industries everywhere have access to low risk, safe and successful application of automation technology. CSI membership offers members access to resources needed to attain and exceed business goals. To highlight just a few of our many member benefits, the CSIA Best Practices Manual guides control system integration companies in the setup and running of a solid company. CSIA's Business Insurance Program offers members an excellent insurance program for business owners, subcontractors, and more. The program includes members from all over the world enjoying the peace of mind that comes with CSIA insurance. CSIA Industrial Automation Exchange is the premier automation guide featuring system integrators and suppliers who provide industrial, manufacturing, and process automation solutions. For integrators and suppliers, it's a place to market their expertise. Clients will find white papers, case studies, capabilities, contact information, and engage in conversation directly with CSIA members. Please follow CSIA's online events calendars for all upcoming webinars. CSIA partner webinars are opportunities given to CSIA industry partners to address hot topics and demonstrate their expertise. You won't want to miss these opportunities to learn from the comfort of your own office or home. And for more information about CSIA, please visit our website or contact us at info at staff.controlsys or 847-686-2245. And at this time, I would like to introduce our presenters from Leicester. Jason Sanders, Manager, Industrial Heating Division. Jason has been an integral part of Leicester's industrial heating team over the last few years. He brings 20 years of experience in engineering design, sales, and product management with a focus on instrumentation and controls. In his current role, Jason provides application and educational support to end users, manages dealer and, and key accounts to strengthen relationship, and has marketing responsibilities for the industrial I'm sorry about that, I missed that. It's marketing responsibilities for the industrial heating division. In addition, in addition to his product specialist responsibilities, he leads a team of sales engineers and technical support specialists dedicated to providing application assistance with industrial heating applications and advancing the product portfolio in the US. David Rothbard, plastic fabrication product specialist, Dave has been a key component to Leicester's plastic fabrication team over the last few years, making a huge impact on the success of Leicester's latest extruders and hand welding tools. Dave brings a tremendous amount of wisdom and experience to Leicester's plastic fabrication industry and has led Leicester's DVS training and certification initiative here in the States. This has positively impacted plastic fabricators expertise all across the US equipping them with the knowledge and techniques to enhance their day-to-day -day welding substantial. Andrew Geiger, manager, Leicester Plastic Welding Division. Andrew joined Leicester Technologies in 2014 as manager of laser plastic welding and is responsible for developing and executing the business strategies for North and South America. Before joining Leicester, he worked extensively as a solutions provider in optical imaging and industrial test equipment. An Ohio native, Andrew received his degree in material science and engineering from the Ohio State University, where his primary studies centered around the effects of high temperature oxidation on aerospace engine components. Currently, Andrew is focused like a laser on expanding knowledge of the flexibility and numerous benefits of laser transmission welding within the polymers industry. And with that, I would now like to turn it over to our speakers. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for the introduction, Colin. Just gonna share my screen here. 
Can you see that okay, Colin? Yes. Okay, perfect. So again, as Colin mentioned, my name is Jason Sanders, the manager in the, of the industrial heating division. But before we jump into talking about our topic today of thermoplastic fabrication and um, modification techniques, let's talk a little bit about the history of Leicester. So Leicester is a Swiss-based organization with over 70 years of experience. Our core competency resides in plastic welding and hot air technologies. Our founder got his start by developing a line of vacuum cleaners, which he was able to take the engineering principles and concepts that he learned and also apply them into a line of handheld products that are, that's used today for plastic welding. Currently, we manufacture a line of industrial heating products, which includes heaters, blowers, hot air blowers, plastic fabrication products such as handheld extruders and heat guns, equipment for tarp and textile manufacturing, laser plastic welding products, gas detection equipment, and tools for the roofing industry. With the technology that we have in our portfolio, we have been able to support customers across the world. We currently have about 130 sales and service centers, which allows us to share our experience on a global scale. But now let's talk a little bit about thermoplastic fabrication and finishing techniques. So if you look at plastics today, it's utilized in essentially every industry in a variety of different ways. Um, one of the largest industries to take advantage of plastics is um, food and beverage products. So if you go to your grocery store and take a look at the products that are on the shelf, there's either some sort of a film that the product is wrapped in, such as a candy, or maybe it's something as simple as maybe a, a beverage carton like orange juice that has a plastic closure on top of it. But if we dive a little bit deeper into some other industries, you also see some other products start to take shape. One of those industries is the automotive industry. Uh, products that are, that are uh, taking place from plastics are uh, components such as interior systems and tail light lenses in order to produce lightweight components at a much lower cost. Um, another industry that utilizes plastics is the medical industry. Plastics processing allows medical device manufacturers to produce components in a repeatable manner. With plastics manufacturing, there are some items to consider when it comes to defining the process. Uh, one of the first things that you want to take a look at is the current method of processing that's in your facility today. Uh, this would be a really good opportunity to identify some pain points that you are experiencing and figure out different ways on how you would like to resolve them. Um, after you review the current process, uh, another thing that you want to take a look at is the volume of components that you'd like to produce. Um, having a good understanding of your manufacturing demands will help identify potential equipment needs and, and costs associated with those manufacturing efforts. In addition to the volume of components, you're going to want to take a look at some of your manufacturing specifications, which is another critical item. Um, having a good understanding of not only your needs, but also your end users needs can, can actually come into play and help you produce a, a better quality of, of parts. And last but not least, thinking about different ways of incorporating automation into the process. Um, with the possibility of incorporating automation in the process, it can actually help improve the overall quality of the part, but in a very safe and repeatable manner. But even when we, when we consider all of these, uh, take all these items into consideration and start to address them, some issues can, can arise from the process. And one of those items is flash. Well, what is flash? Flash is excess, excess buildup of material that's left over from the process. Uh, flash is obviously an undesired effect, uh, which can be caused by a couple of different things. One, one of those being lack of mold clamping force, or maybe there's a, a defect in the mold itself. Um, if you take a look at the pictures off to the right, you can kind of see some of the, the fine hairs or some raised edges. All of these can cause poor quality of, of finished parts at the end of the day, which in turn also increases uh, your material scrap, but also rejected parts. Some of the ways to actually mitigate some of uh, the flash that you may incur in the manufacturing process is just simple prevention methods, checking your tool clearance and, and cleaning the mold surface. But if you still continue to have issues with, with flash, 
you can always do a, a simple de mechanical deburring of that excessive material to remove it to get closer to the quality of product that you're looking for. But what if you want to automate this process and make it a little bit smoother? So let's take a look at uh, a real world application that we had an opportunity to work on. So we had an opportunity to work with a customer producing components for the medical industry. Uh, the particular issue the customer faced was related to poor part quality. Um, even though they had a maintenance program in place, issues with flash still continue to surface. Uh, so what the customer did was they actually did some testing out their own at their facility to play around with the heat gun just to see how their part would, res would respond to the introduction and see if they could remove any of that material. So if you look off to the picture on the right, that's the part before they actually introduced hot air. And this is the component after they did the hot air treatment. So what the customer learned from this whole experience is that they could actually um, take hot air and use that as, as a more quicker, more efficient method for their deburring efforts uh, for their manufacturing process. And in the end, it could potentially lead to reduction of uh, rejected parts and also scrap materials. So this customer wants to take this a little step further and wants to do a proof of concept uh, with Leister uh, for some hot air test trials. And so what that looks, what that looks like is um, setting up some, some trials in our lab with some, uh, some crude tools. Um, but what we were able to determine from the, from the test is that we were able to identify the dwell time and the temperature necessary for the flashing to take place. Uh, to do this, we ran some customer sample parts just to see how the materials were going to respond with the introduction of heat. Uh, and from there, we were able to identify which Leister products would be a good fit for the process. Since the customer wanted to automate the, uh, the process, uh, we focused on the Leister LHS system series of heaters and uh, one of our robust blowers. Uh, with the LHS system series of heaters, uh, we chose this because uh, it has the ability to accept a zero to 10 volt or four to 20 milliamp signal from either a PLC or another control device. So the picture that you see on the left up in the top is in our test lab here. So we were actually able to set up a small conveyor system mount an LHS system series of heater over that conveyor system with a nozzle and apply the hot air. The picture on the right is actually the installation at the customer's facility. So they were able to integrate all of these components into their process and have good results today. And another example I'd like to show you is an automotive application. So for this particular application, uh, we have uh, a tail light lens that was actually produced in the mold, uh, but has a little bit of flash on the area where it needs to make a connection into the rest of the housing. Uh, so in the video, we have a robot that's actually picking up the lens and passing the lens through a stream of hot air. One thing to point out with the air heater that you see is on the very tip of the, of the discharge, we actually have a nozzle uh, in place to actually focus some more of the energy into the, the desired area to get a much cleaner part at the end of the day. So as you can see, it's, it's a clean edge after the process. So there's always different ways to, to learn about uh, different methods and, and different initiatives that's going on within the industry. And one of those ways you can do that is uh, working with equipment providers such as license to learn about what's the the best way or the best methods to actually apply energy into your process to remove some of this excessive material that you have on your components. Uh, another way to go about finding out more about what's going on within the industry is working with uh, material manufacturers and suppliers. Uh, another way to learn more about you know, what's going on or, or potentially helping you with your application is working with different trade uh, organizations such as CSIA. So even though we're talking about different deflashing methods, and you want to incorporate automation into your process, a good way to go about doing that is working with members from CSIA to learn about what's the, the best way to go about incorporating those items into your process. And last but not least, the different OEM initiatives and innovations that are in the market today. 
And now I'm going to turn it over to David Rothbard uh, to talk a little bit more about plastic fabrication and specifically the automated extrusion welder. Thank you, Jason. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Rothbard. I manage the plastic fabrication tool category for Leicester in the U.S., including Leicester extrusion welders, along with uh, flooring installation tools and hot air tools and heat guns. Today, I'm here to discuss extrusion welders, specifically the new Leicester automated extrusion welder. To begin the discussion about automated and automating an extrusion welding application, uh, let's discuss extrusion welding in general. What we're talking about is the molecular bonding or joining of thermoplastics. We do this by preheating the substrate while extruding out a bead of molten plast while applying pressure to bond the thermoplastic molecules. A few of the most common applications for extrusion welding are shown on the right-hand side of the slide. The largest market segment is probably tanks, not the kind the Army drives that shoot uh, uh, ordnance, but holding tanks for liquids, powders, steel, reinforced plastic tanks for plating applications, and pickling chemi chemical tanks and then there are other popular applications for extrusion welding, including municipal water systems, wastewater treatment applications, ventilation systems, uh, and aquaculture tanks and piping for fish seafood farms, including uh, tanks and all the uh, associated piping. These applications are welded with plastic, not steel or form concrete because plastic is lighter weight, highly resistant to chemicals, and it does not rust. Here's a short video showing a portable extrusion welder being used. This is the current manual process. You can see that uh, in a second here, it'll pop up and it's a very labor intensive process. The welder shown weighs about, uh, not, not the guy welding, the actual tool weighs about 13 pounds. And this is actually a very easy to perform weld. There's no obstructions, it's an easy height to reach. It's very much a, an optimal condition. This is not the normal case. Usually this is much more complicated and, and difficult to produce. So as, as you can see uh, with the manual process, it's, it's very labor intensive. Next. So as we uh, transfer to the next slide, Hang on one more, there you go. Now that you've seen uh, one of the extrusion welders being used, let's, let's talk about portable extrusion welders. So they come in various sizes and capacity measured in output per hour. And this is quoted in kilograms. Most manufacturers of portable extrusion welders are European, uh, like Jason and uh, Colin had told you, we're a Swiss company, but uh, the majority of may welder manufacturers are in Europe, so they're rated in kilograms or a kilogram per hour of output. Leicester's lineup ranges for, for the portable extrusion welders ranges in size from one kilogram to six kilogram. The larger capacity, uh, the bigger the barrel of the extrusion gun and associated motors and gears. Uh, these tools weigh anywhere from seven and a half to 30 pounds. And again, the, in the extrusion welding process, they use hot air to melt the substrate while at the same time extruding out and laying down a bead of molten plast. Over 90% of the welding applications are performed using three different types of plastics. As you can see on the right, polyethylene, polypropylene, and PVC. Each has different welding characteristics, PVC being the most difficult. We do have portable and automated extrusion solutions for PVC. Uh, there's, there are just a few other uh, things that need to be taken into account when welding PVC. And here you see what the, the, this presentation is about, the animation of a Leicester automated welder solution. For a, if you find a, I'll let it play out. Very dramatic. Sounds like we're going off the floor here. These are the components that light through the five.
So now that you've, you, uh, I can send out links, by the way, of YouTube videos of actual automated solutions. Uh, unfortunately, for the purposes of this uh, production, I, I can't put them in here, but my contact info appears at the end of the, the presentation. Please send me an email if you'd like to see actual not animated, but actual automated solutions out in the market. Oops. So we're going to press, here we go. Now that you've seen the extrusion welding process and have a basic understanding of the technology involved, why do you think it would lend itself to automation? Well, the main reasons are labor cost is high, turnover is high due, the, due to the difficulty, and training and certification is difficult to obtain and expensive. In my bio, Colin mentioned uh, that I lead the DVS certification effort here at Leicester. DVS is a German joining society and they license and certify uh, extrusion welders, human beings. It's uh, only available, available through trade schools in Germany. So I bring a guy over here once a year and we do DVS license and certification training. But for companies, it's very expensive and obviously difficult to obtain this certification. So that's another reason why automating would alleviate the need to do that. Automating also lends itself to higher quality and consistency because the control value variables can be more precisely achieved. Again, the three variables are heat, speed, heat being temperature, speed, and pressure. Also, increases in production can be achieved due to no fatigue, due to the weight of the tool. Think about it, holding a 30 pound welder above your shoulders is very difficult and hard to do for any period of time. Parts of the welder also can reach temperatures uh, up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, there's a lot of uh, burns associated to the process. The Leister automated solution is unique in that it is component-based and open source when it comes to the control and drive components. Leister supplies the end of arm tool welder, the heater for the preheat air, a connection kit along with CAD drawings, and we supply a suggested list of control and drive components. However, drive communication and control components, as well as the robot, are chosen by the integrator and tailored for individual applications. Leister offers two different welders for varying output size and applications. As you can see on the left, we've got the Weldplast 200i 2 kilogram welder automated extrusion, extruding solution. Uh, capable and, and well suited towards 3D printing applications. It weighs 35 pounds and can handle a wide variety of, of material, including PVC. And you can see the alphabet soup on the bottom of that slide. Those are all uh, thermoplastic uh, uh, chemistries that this welder can handle, and it's a, a very broad base uh, application wise. The higher capacity welder is a six kilogram welder, the Weldplast 600i, <clears throat> a large, uh, good for applications using large scale 3D printing, uh, and it outputs a, a high amount of plast capable of six kilograms per hour output of either. Uh, PE, polyethylene, or power, polypropylene for larger and thicker substrate material. Finally, our automated extrusion welder uh, modular solution is open source. These are the components that Leister provides. And if you look, we've got the weld head, the, the routing of the preheat air, the tubing kit, the digital heater, which Jason was talking about in his presentation, we use that component in this solution as well, and we supply the connection housing. Now, finally, the automated extrusion welder solution component control points. These are these are the things that are, are benefit most or that benefit from the automation. The plast temperature is digitally controlled. The hot air temperature to melt the substrate. The hot air flow is controlled through the tubing, and we can also control uh, through an automated solution the air volume, air pressure, and drive speed. And our solution is EtherCAT P communication standard capable. So you decide which control drive components to use in the robot. 
our components are open source. And that's the Leister automated welder solution. So uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Andrew Geiger, our, our laser manager to give the laser presentation. Thank you, Dave, Jason. A lot of exciting things happening uh, in the process heat and uh, extrusion welding uh, industries. Another technology uh, with some exciting breakthroughs is laser plastic welding. Uh, I manage that division and uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, how that technology works and how it can be integrated. So how does laser welding work? Essentially, there's a substrate, uh, a lower component that's absorbent to laser wavelengths, an upper component that is transparent to laser wavelengths, and I might add that all thermoplastics uh, are transmissive in their natural state, that's without additives, uh, and to make those absorbent, uh, a component is added, such as carbon black or clear weld by crystalline. We then apply a clamping force, that's a nest fixture uh, underneath the absorbent component and a clamping glass uh, to the upper component to apply pressure. Now this pressure is utilized to uh, counteract any thermal expansion forces that may occur as we heat uh, thermoplastics. We then apply a laser. There's a number of ways we can apply this laser and I'll show you more on those here shortly. But once the laser is applied, it transmits through that transmissive layer, it's absorbed into the absorbent layer uh, and creates a localized melt pool. This melt pool can now be uh, propagated throughout the, uh, throughout the part, uh, what we call a weld path uh, to uh, create the bond. So as the laser moves across that weld path, uh, crystallization or um, uh, it cures basically instantly after the laser passes over it. So similar to uh, what Dave mentioned, uh, the, the main components uh, of, or the main variables of laser welding are the speed, the power, and the clamping force. So what are the capabilities of laser welding? Well, it works with many different shapes and sizes and types of plastics, uh, polymers. Uh, color, it's, it's color independent, it doesn't matter what color uh, you use. There was a, a lot of, uh, historically, uh, it was black and clear. Uh, but now uh, with companies like uh, RTP, who provide many different uh, color combinations and formulations of, of polymers, we're able to make those um, absorbent and, and transmissive as needed. Uh, there are different types of uh, ways to deliver the laser light, and I'll show you those here shortly. Uh, it's contact free, uh, vibration free. So that means the, the part or the component is left uh, unharmed or untethered. No wear and tear on the, uh, the tools uh, utilized to hold the part in place. Uh, this is uh, not the case with other types of uh, vibration welding and, and such. In the end, you end up with uh, components that look much like these uh, on the on the lower left, uh, we see marine components. And I, I point out marine components uh, because some of the most harmful and caustic environments uh, for plastic components are marine or nautical uh, parts. These parts can be submerged in water. And, and the beauty of laser welding is that uh, the hermeticity of, uh, of, of, of the final component uh, is 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 wonderful uh, really the the ability to have uh, parts under underwater with uh, a gas tight hermeticity uh, is, is ideal uh, for for parts that are in this type of atmosphere uh, in the middle we have you know automotive components and uh, automotive components need to be robust and uh, built to last and laser welding does provide that um, we basically can make a a, um, a bond that utilizes the material's own strength as its, as its birth strength. Uh, so based on the material selection, uh, you have a good idea of how well that, that bond uh, will last. 
On the lower right, uh, we're showing medical components. So the, the ideal um, scenario for medical bonding uh, is, is attention to detail, the ability to uh, weld in very, very fine lines, as you can see. You might have to get close to the monitor just to see how fine those lines are. Uh, and that's, that's really uh, what laser welding is about, very accurate, uh, very complex geometry. Uh, we're able to weld minimal thermal load. So the heat affected zone is, is so small that even sensitive electronics and sensors uh, can be nearby and uh, completely unharmed by the bonding process. Um, emission free. So clean room environments are, are very uh, well suited uh, for laser welding. And it, uh, the, the, the cure time is zero. So th those of you familiar with things like solvent bonding uh, and, and other um, you know, methods that were much uh, earlier than laser welding, uh, you, you, know, you know and appreciate uh, what zero cure time uh, means. So what can we weld? Uh, here we're looking at a chart of a number of different types of thermoplastics that uh, we're probably all familiar with. Uh, first and foremost, all thermoplastics uh, are weldable to their identical mate. So we see that green line that goes from the top left to the bottom right. Uh, and then we have the good combination, those that have been tested and those that work um, in their, their raw state. I, I'll, I'll interject a note here that there's a number of additives that can be added uh, to these base materials, such as flame retardants, uh, anti-stat, antibacterial, um, different, um, different additives, basically. Uh, those can play a role uh, in the bonding capability of the material. So don't take this chart as, a, um, as the, the rule of the land. But uh, in most cases, uh, all of those thermoplastics in blue are bondable. Um, so the reason those additives uh, can hinder the bond is much like driving down the street. If there's a, a major boulder or a, a truck sitting on the side of the road, the car needs to be able to go around that. Uh, and the laser uh, doesn't have that, that ability. It's, it's a straight shot uh, from the optic uh, to the component. So things that get in the way of the laser uh, do hinder the bonding process. But in most cases, uh, again, we work with companies like RTP that are able to modify that uh, formulation to make it suitable for the application. Now those in red, those are the materials that are not as compatible and we always recommend trying those. Um, also, you'll notice there's num a number of blocks that haven't been filled. Uh, those are basically just material combinations that either aren't used in industry or we just haven't tried them. Uh, there isn't enough call uh, to do so. So there's a number of ways to deliver the laser. Uh, and we're showing uh, the six primary ways uh, for laser delivery. In the upper right uh, contour, uh, very similar to using a laser pointer, point and shoot type uh, operation. Quasi-simultaneous is also um, very much a, a form of contour, but it's the ability to move the laser in a near simultaneous fashion. In the upper right, we have global roller. Uh, this is, is similar to using a ballpoint pen. So we're applying the laser and the ball is a quartz ball that allows us to both focus uh, the laser and apply pressure in a localized uh, region. Simultaneous is just as it sounds. Simultaneous welding is applying the laser in all uh, areas that it's projected to simultaneously. Radial uh, is another form of simultaneous welding that allows us to uh, circumferentially uh, cover a, a tube or a pipe or a fitting uh, with the laser simultaneously. And mask welding is a, is a patent solution by Leister that allows us to uh, mask off certain areas uh, that we do not wish to um, irradiate with the laser uh, and we can blanket uh, large areas uh, of material and completely bond that surface area. So all of those methods, um, we're not showing that. I'll just let these play out here.
So we're showing a number of different methods. Um, I can always speak in more detail about these late, uh, at, a, at a later date if you're interested. Uh, but basically what we're showing here is there are numerous ways to cast, cast the laser and uh, create a um, excellent final product utilizing laser technology. Okay. So all of those solutions can be uh, integrated into what we consider turnkey uh, systems, but these turnkey systems can then be integrated um, into assembly lines. You can see on the left-hand side, uh, we're showing our standard turnkey solution uh, with a uh, conveyor belt attachment. So it can feed right into an existing infrastructure uh, built for automation and uh, product manufacturing. On the right-hand side is our much is 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 its much larger brother, uh, the WSAT Maxi or Workstation Advanced Technology Maximum. Uh, this system is large enough to hold uh, robotic assemblies. Uh, here in the U.S., we work closely with uh, companies like Kawasaki, Kawasaki Robotics, uh, to create uh, a turnkey solution that fits into the integration of a much larger platform or assembly line. And finally, I show you uh, an integration called Flex Hijoin. Uh, it was a collaboration between all of the companies uh, listed there uh, that use, utilizes many different technologies uh, for automation and efficiency. Um, in this particular video, you'll see those technologies being played out and more precisely where laser plastic welding uh, fits into that, those, those processes. So this particular uh, setup is for uh, automotive manufacturing. And as these technologies work together, uh, the final product uh, is completed. Here is the laser welding portion of that. And it's finished. Can I answer any questions for you today? Any no, questions? I'm not seeing any any questions there. Um, All right, give a couple minutes. Uh, so I, this is Dave Rothbard with the automated extrusion welder application, and I just like to throw out a few that uh, are commonly asked with with uh, the extrusion welder products, and uh, I was going to kid around that it was Paul from Peoria who was asking. <laughs> how much market share do we have? How many solutions do we have in the marketplace is a common question. And uh, just to answer that, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd say that this is a new product and a new solution that Leister, uh, Leister is, has begun to partner with integrators in the US and Europe and India uh, and Asia. Again, we're a global uh, corporation. It's a growth opportunity in, uh, with an established application base not a large existing solution base, but uh, it's a growth application. And uh, again, we're very friendly uh, to integration because we're an open source and allow you to use whatever components you decide. And the cost of the Leicester components is another question that gets tossed out a lot. And actually the cost of the Leicester supplied components are approximately eight to 10,000, depending on the model. Our equipment is a key component, but a very small percentage of the overall cost of an automated solution. And those are two of the common questions on the automated uh, extrusion welding solution. Thanks, Dave. Any questions? My mom is not there asking. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not uh, not really seeing much more on there, Jason. All right. Well, I'd like to thank uh, CSIA um, for hosting our, our presentation. And uh, from all of us here at Leicester, we'd like to thank, uh, thank you all for our attendance, for your attendance. And uh, we're certainly available uh, for questions in the future, uh, given all our contact information here on this slide. And, um, we will uh, 
finish with a uh, video and um, we wish you all uh, a very nice day. All right, appreciate that, Jason. All right, thanks.